On the Achieving Optimal podcast, Tommy and I were talking about the three bucket saving system. And we thought it might be helpful for you visual learners out there to actually have a diagram where I just take a few minutes and work through how this works. So quite simply, we're gonna start off and we're gonna have our income source. And our income source is our primary source of income in our lives, whether it's we have a job and it's our salary or we own a business. And in this case, we're gonna talk about a business owner. In the example we talked about on the podcast, we have a business owner who has a business that does $500,000 a year in gross revenue, has $200,000 a year in expenses, and he takes $150,000 a year salary. That leaves us with a net income of $150,000. And as many of you know, the tax code is extremely complicated, so we're gonna skip all tax considerations just to keep this really simple. So we have this net income of $150,000, and basically we are going to take that $150,000 and we are gonna divide it by a predetermined income ratio. So in this case, our income ratio that we've decided on is the conservative bucket is gonna get 50% of our income and our aggressive bucket is gonna get 50% of our income. So that means with $150,000 in net income that we are gonna move $75,000 to the conservative bucket and $75,000 to the aggressive bucket. Now, once the money flows into these two buckets, Let's just take a minute and talk about what are the type of investments that would go in these buckets. First of all, we have the conservative bucket. We talked about this on the podcast. This is where you would put your 401k and your IRA investments. And hopefully you're able to pick up a, a, a few little points that you could take to run your portfolio more efficiently, primarily minimizing the impact of drawdowns. And so you could do that by using the permanent portfolio you discussed. we discussed you could also use the high yield portfolio that we discussed. You would use those in the 401k and the IRA to be able to get steady returns with minimal drawdowns. We also discussed about your mortgage. This would be where you would pay your mortgage down at whatever rate seems uh, best for you. This is also where life insurance would go, your life insurance payments. Those of you who have disability insurance, you can make your disability insurance payments out of here. Again, this is a safety feature, right? So if the disability insurance gets enacted, it's going to help you maintain your lifestyle. Rainy day fund, six months to a year of reserve cash. Municipal bonds, you know, tax-free bonds that pay low rates of return. Annuities. One of the things that uh, we didn't talk about on the podcast, but it's also really important, is physical gold. Uh, a topic for another podcast would be talking about this concept of a safe box. But what a safe box is, is it's your doomsday box. If everything went crazy, something unbelievable happened, where there was, a, say, a government collapse or something like that, you'd go to your safe box. In your safe box, you would have things like gold coins, silver coins. Well, this is where you go out and buy physical bullion, physical gold coins. They sit in your conservative bucket. Those of you who have a safety deposit box or safe in your house, things that you're putting in there would fall in that bucket. Like cash. I always advocate having physical cash on hand. One thing most people don't know is in 2008, the system was actually really close to where you wouldn't even be able to get cash out of an ATM. Um, and if you don't believe it, go to Greece. You, know, you go back to Greece two, three years ago, you couldn't get cash out of an ATM in Greece, a max of $40 a day equivalent. Um, also, another thing that could go here is actually unlevered real estate. So what that means is that if you bought a house or an apartment building and you paid cash for it, that's going to kick off a rate of return, and it's safe because the building is paid for in full. Okay, so this gives you an idea of what could go in this bucket. Then we go down to the aggressive bucket. In the aggressive bucket, we have things like investing in other businesses, private equity funds, Trading or speculation, as I discussed in the podcast. Leveraged real estate. So this would be where you'd buy commercial real estate, apartment buildings, this sort of thing, but you're doing it with loans. And also hedge fund investments. Just gives you a flavor of the, how different these investments are and get a sense of what could go in each of these buckets. Okay, so we're going to make some return assumptions, and they're assumptions, right? 
In the conservative bucket, we said we're targeting six to 12% returns. So we are gonna say that we get 8% a year, or 8% for this given year. And then in our aggressive bucket, it's aggressive. We're going for big returns. Of course, the trade-off is we can lose money. We can lose all of it. So in this case, we're actually going to assume that our aggressive return is 30%. That's definitely possible with these type of investments. Okay, so, and just to have these bu buckets funded to begin with, at the beginning of the year, we have $100,000 in our conservative bucket, and we have $100,000 in our aggressive bucket, and we have $10,000 in our dream bucket. Okay, so at the end of the year, we have $150,000 in income, $75,000 goes conservative, $75,000 goes aggressive. We also generated 8% return in our conservative bucket on $100,000 in capital. So that gives us an $8,000 return in that bucket off the investments. We also got a 30% return off the aggressive bucket. So that means we had $100,000 in that bucket. We have $30,000 in return there. Now, we have our ratio of how we divide income, and then we have our aggressive ratio. This is the ratio of how we divide our returns from the aggressive bucket. So in this case, we used a third, a third, a third. So that means that we are going to take $10,000 from the return from the aggressive bucket and move it here. So our conservative bucket is going up by another $10,000. We have $10,000 that's going to be reinvested. Back into the aggressive bucket. And then we have $10,000. That's going to flow down into our dream bucket. Now, let's just see now at the end of the year, where do we stand? Our conservative bucket, we had $100,000 to begin the year. We picked up $8,000 in return and $10,000 allocation from the aggressive bucket. Plus, we made seventy-five. We contributed $75,000 to it. So at the end of the year, our conservative bucket now has $193,000 in it. Now we go to our aggressive bucket. Our aggressive bucket had $100,000 in it. We, re we made 30,000 in which we reinvested 10, and we picked up another 75,000 from our income. So our aggressive bucket now has a balance of $185,000. And our dream bucket, which had 10,000 in it, it got a $10,000 allocation from the aggressive bucket, so it now has a balance of 20,000. Now this 20,000, you can choose to spend it all right now, or you can choose to spend some of it and save some of it. So if you wanted to buy a vacation home, or you wanted to, let's say you wanted to buy a Mercedes, and the Mercedes was $80,000, well, you don't have $80,000, you're gonna to have to wait a year or two. You have to wait. But if you wanted to go to Europe, or you wanted to go to Disney World, you actually would have the money to be able to do that. Maybe you do both. Maybe you go to Disney World with 10,000. And 10,000 remains for your Mercedes for next year. So what's nice about this is it allows you to make decisions very quickly of where the money flows. Remember what I said in the podcast, having a plan is key. This is not that complicated, but it's a plan. And if you follow something like this, and you just even for a few years, you would be amazed at how much money accumulates in these buckets. And you are in a position of strength, which is the most important thing. So hopefully you find some value in that, and I look forward to talking with you soon. Thanks.